It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you... Really care about it's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number, you're gonna need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800. 866. The Tom Likas Show, powered by Knight Rider, an original two hour movie event, Sunday night, February 17th at 9, 8 Central, only on NBC TV. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Uh, this was something for people who follow this kind of stuff, and I'm getting the sneaking suspicion more and more people are following it, it being politics than they have in years. Last Friday, I was shocked to see how many of our callers wanted to talk about the various primaries and about the candidates. You may have noticed last night that Barack Obama won all three primaries last night. Delaware, Maryland. Sorry, Maryland, Virginia, and D.C., is that right? Yes. They're all in that area. <laughs> but um, he not only won all three, but he won them convincingly. The two states, it was over 60%, and in the District of Columbia, which is largely African-American, 75% of the vote... And Barack Obama now has more delegates than Hillary Clinton. Maybe I wasn't so wrong about America not wanting a woman president. I have made no secret about the fact that in the California primary, I favored Barack Obama. He was not my original choice, but my original choice turned out to be a dud as a candidate. And that was John Edwards, and I, you know, I, I don't think he's got the goods. Now that I saw him actually out there campaigning, I just don't think he does. But that's what the campaign is all about. You know, you, you pick an early favorite based on the little bit you know. And then as time goes on, you, uh, you say, this person's even better than I thought, or this person isn't what I thought, or... This person can't win or whatever. That's what happens. And Barack Obama now has more delegates than Hillary Clinton and is the front runner in the Democratic presidential race. So let me make it clear before I get started here. I'm a supporter of Barack Obama. And if he goes against John McCain, there's just no question who I'll vote for because... I have personal experience with John McCain, and I happen to believe he's a sleaze bag and a dishonest, miserable individual tried to get me fired from my job once, and now I'm in a position to uh, <laughs> pay him back. Slime bag. By the way, he did not succeed in getting me fired, but he did give it the old college try. Yes, he did. When I was working in Phoenix, he tried to get me fired. He called the owner of the radio station, tried to get me fired. Yes, he did. Uh, that never sat well with me. That's uh, over 20 years ago. And I never forgot, John. I never did. So uh, I'm, a, I'm an Obama guy. And I wanted to lay out uh, that fact very clearly at the beginning of this hour before I say what I'm about to say. And let me first say that I, what I'm about to say has nothing to do with what I wish would happen or what I hope would happen or what I recommend would happen. None of those things are true. What I'm about to say is something I hope doesn't happen. 
And uh, I'm not a religious type, but I would be praying it doesn't happen. All right? But I can't help looking back on history. And uh, here's a guy who is energetic, charismatic, really smart, and uh, he's got a lot of momentum. Young people love to hear him speak. And young people, for the first time in years, are motivated to participate in the political process as a result of Barack Obama being in this election, as evidenced by the fact that we now get calls about politics, something that hasn't happened here ever. I mean, the last time I talked about politics on the radio was over 15 years ago. Because honestly, that's the last time I think anyone really gave a rat's ass about it. And after that, it just became a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of boring Christian conservatives and their AM radio talk shows. And, you know, it really didn't hold much uh, appeal to me. There was no energy. There was no controversy. There was nothing crackling about it that would make for a really good radio show. So we have a very interesting uh, and possibly clear-cut choice in November, should Obama continue in this direction. Now, that's not a guarantee, because there are big states coming up that people say Hillary Clinton should win, like Texas and Ohio. Who knows? But uh, let's say Obama becomes the Democratic nominee. They're going to have that big Democratic convention this summer. And let's say history is made and a black man is the nominee of one of the two parties. And we go to the election with an energetic, charismatic, intelligent African-American against a an aging volatile angry white guy that could end up being your choice now again i can't repeat this enough times i'd love to see barack obama win Love to see him be the president. But you have to look at history. There were other charismatic, intelligent, electric people in our past who did everything they could to change the way things were done. Uh, some of their names include Martin Luther King, my personal hero. John F. Kennedy, somebody I did not personally think accomplished all that much, but people did. And I think the even more beloved Robert F. Kennedy. And there's something these three guys all have in common. You know what it is? They were all assassinated. I mean, I think the last Republican to be assassinated was Abraham Lincoln. But in my lifetime, three of the most energetic, dynamic, intelligent, and frankly, left-leaning individuals were shot to death. And it all happened in a five-year period. Between, uh, actually, six year period between 1962. Sorry, it was 60. It was a, it was, it was a four year period. It was uh, for five year period. It was 63 to 68. 1963 to 1968. In a five year period, three people 
who all said that they uh, they were tired of the status quo, who were all loved by people. I think he, he, just like Ronald Reagan was loved by people who didn't agree with him, I think all of those three individuals were loved, if you read back. They were loved, or at least liked. And they all said they would change things. And Martin Luther King didn't just say it. He went out and marched to the streets, and he made changes. John F. Kennedy, in my view, was all hype. I don't think he changed very much of anything, except people's perception of a presidential candidate that he should have charisma and be good on TV. And that's the one thing I think he changed. But the point is, and again, I... This is not what I want or wish for or hope for. But I saw all of that on TV. The Kennedy assassination was not live on TV. I didn't see that, but I saw the guy accused of assassinating him murdered on TV live. Lee Harvey Oswald, you know what happened on TV live? Live. When I was a little kid, I'm watching TV, all right? Now, get this, I'm a little kid, all right? I'm seven years old. I'm sitting there watching TV. And they say, okay, here comes Lee Harvey Oswald, the man who's accused of shooting John F. Kennedy. And you're watching live TV, you're seven years old, you see the guy shot on TV. Robert F. Kennedy, that was also not live on TV, but it happened a stone's throw from where I'm standing right now. The Ambassador Hotel on Wilshire Boulevard. At the Coconut Grove. And this uh, Sirhan Sirhan uh, just came out and uh, with a handgun shot Robert F. Kennedy, who was running for the Democratic nomination for president in the 1968 election. <sighs> And it took that uh, Rosie Greer, the former football player and TV personality, to tackle Sirhan Sirhan. That's true. And, of course, Martin Luther King, who was not a politician, but he accomplished more than most politicians we've ever known. And um, is my personal hero. And he was shot uh, while he was speaking in Memphis. Ever since then, guys like that kind of haven't existed. Or if they have, they've kind of kept a low profile. We haven't seen people like that since the 1960s in this country. And the result of it is that we've had decades of these bland Republican candidates telling you what Christians they are and get the photo op coming out of church and... Uh, what have you. Now, again, it has nothing to do with conservative or liberal values because I'm a libertarian, and frankly, I'm a conservative when it comes to um, government spending. But all government spending, whether it be spending on lazy people who like to party or spending it on a war, I'm just not in favor of a lot of that stuff, so don't try to pin me as one thing or another. But uh, the candidates were boring. You know, Ronald Reagan was likable, and lots of people liked him. But uh, it was all the same thing for years and years. And, and the reason Barack Obama is so interesting and dynamic and electric when he walks into a room is because we haven't had anybody like that in a long time. Now, you can't say you haven't wondered about this, and I've talked to friends who are black who've told me this point blank. They said to me point blank, and I'm just quoting them now, okay? Obama will never make it. Even if he gets the nomination, someone will kill him. Because no one's going to let a black man be president of the United States. Shocking words. But people have said that to me. I hope they protect this guy, and I hope he's got the, uh, hope he doesn't do a Benazir Bhutto and, uh, you know, go out there and run around in public without the proper protection. Because once people think he can actually win, I think the guy's in real danger. And I, again, 
let me point out that uh, not only do I not want the guy to be in danger, I'm afraid to even talk about this, to be honest with you. But too many people have said it to me. Not because they know anything or would do anything. On the contrary, they'd love to see him win. But if uh, bullets took out John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy and, and Martin Luther King, and now we have a guy who kind of comes from that lineage in that he kind of appeals to the same kind of individuals, and I don't mean black people, I just mean young people, uh, a diverse group. Uh, he's got energy and he's got uh, charisma and he's a good speaker and he's really a smart guy. It's something he has in common with all those other three that I told you about. Do you think these people are just being paranoid and stupid or do you think they've got a point? Tom, 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 Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. People always say to me, they say, uh, well, do you have a daughter? I, I usually tell them, I say... No, I usually have somebody else's dog. <laughs> Sometimes twice. It's the Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likes Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. Hi, David. Bring it up. But, um, you know, nothing is sacred on this program. You know, Barack Obama, he may be the Democratic nominee. And if he becomes the Democratic nominee, I think he's got a really good shot of winning. Just a guess. And there's no guarantees that he'll even become the nominee because there are some primaries coming up next where Hillary Clinton's expected to do well, but who knows? She was expected to do better than she did last night, I'll tell you that. But, uh, you know, you look at history, how many guys like Barack Obama, and I don't mean black guys, I mean people with charisma and energy and appeal to young people and a message and a certain amount of brilliance, how many of them have actually been allowed to continue forward? At least if they were, you know, leaning left-wing or Democratic or whatever. How many? So you just have to wonder. Job on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm good. You know what? I, uh, I'm i a big Obama supporter, and I, I've been waiting for you to bring this topic up, actually, because I know it's been on my mind. I know it's been on your mind and probably a lot of other people's minds, too. Um, I was just waiting for you to bring it out in a, in a manner or, or a form where we can talk about it. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a scary subject. Um, I, you know, have, I registered to vote when I was 18. I was a registered Republican. And over the years, I've uh, kind of uh, changed a lot of my political uh, viewpoints. Uh, now I'm a registered Democrat. I've been following his career uh, very closely, and, and I think he is probably one of the best candidates to do the job uh, for the next four years for us. And it's a scary thought to think that this man – who uh, has a lot of great ideas, who is extremely intelligent, very qualified, um, could possibly be in a, in a situation to where he might lose his life. And I'm pretty sure he's thought about this, his wife, and it, it's probably a main concern uh, of his. But my, my uh, point that I wanted to make is I think that we have progressed far enough to where I think security would be very high, that it would be extremely hard for someone to penetrate those forces, especially in and around the White House. Um, but I think that we've developed enough to where he would be somewhat well protected, to where if that threat was eminent, that we would probably be able to catch it. I mean, if you, if you look at Reagan when he was shot, and I was, I believe it was 80, 81, um, he didn't die uh, from that. And, uh, I mean, they got pretty close to him, number one, uh, but he was able to, you know, to overcome that and, uh, you know, ended up uh, being president for uh, seven more years. Um, but it is definitely that is something that I – I'm scared and have thought about and uh, just hope, hope to God that we have progressed enough in this year 2008 to where something like that 
isn't imminent and will not happen to him. Well, I hope you're right, Job, and I thank you for that. Anthony on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Uh, Tom, I'd like to agree with you and disagree with that caller that just called a minute ago. Sure. Uh, uh, I, I totally disagree. I, I barely know how to program my uh, my VCR or, you know, <laughs> sorry, not VCR, but DVD or player or whatever. I, yeah. I'm an African-American male. Um, I, I wish my child would go to, you know, grow up to want to become president. But I totally agree with you, Tom. It's in the heart and the minds of a whole lot of callers. And you're going to get a lot of calls on this. And, you know, I support, I, you know what, I, I thank you for, you know, having this subject in the first place, Tom. Because, one, uh, you know, I, I've heard that you said John McCain tried to, you know, <laughs> throw a wrecking ball in your career. Yes, he did. Ago. 1987. Yes, he did. <laughs> and, well, good luck with trying to kill your dream. Because I know in this world of dream killers, in this world of, uh, you know, in America, in this world of uh, people who don't want to watch a sport who we can't, we don't even know the person's last name. Um, I actually like to ask a caller to actually tell me, or can you can spell Obama for me? You know, I, I really don't believe in the intelligence of myself and even of the rest of these callers, Tom. So I just, you know. Well, we did have a I, caller once who uh, I was asking him who was running for president. And he was giving me the list, and one of the names was Obama bin Laden. <laughs> yes, I remember that. I remember that exactly. You couldn't make and that up. I remember chicks on politics, um, Tom. Yeah. So if you, if you really want to uh, talk about the intelligence of America, I think you got to re-examine that. And um, you know, I, I, I put I put myself out there too. You know, I'm not exactly totally on 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 point when it comes to doing my research on everything. See, I'm a truck driver. I'm single. You know, but uh, but I, I really believe in what you're saying is absolutely true. Everybody with a dream, Tupac. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if I'd love Tupac in with Martin Luther King, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely, Tom. Uh, could you just take me out? But before uh, I take you out, Anthony, before I take you out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve, what did you want to say to Anthony? Uh, hi, uh, Tom. A long time. First time, long time. Anyway, I just wanted to make mention that uh, a great topic, but I disagree with the uh, caller. Uh, I think Obama, just like a lot of other politicians who are, um, that they know the, the, the risk that they take. I'm thinking about uh, Anwar Sadat back in the 70s and 80s uh, when he was assassinated as the president. I think Obama has looked at the risk he takes and I, I think it's a valid topic, but I don't think it's something that he's uh, it's on the uh, forefront of what he's thinking about. I think he's a great candidate, and uh, I just don't think that that's something that's a major concern of his. Well, you know, you're you're not really concerned until you have a bullet in you. But, um, you know, everybody really don't care what's going to happen until there's actually a bomb in their front porch or something is going on in front of them. Tom made mention of that plenty of times. And, you know, uh, Tom, you're, you're a big hockey fan, right? I am. And didn't you mention one time that uh, a lot of the people don't are not necessarily fans because they don't understand the same common name that everybody else is accustomed to? So we're we're dealing with people who I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to figure. My point is that a lot of people are not used to different things, and Obama is definitely different. So if you put that difference in their face, they're gonna they're gonna do something about it. They're not just gonna sit back and um, relax and let. Um, change occur. There's a guy there holding on to their girlfriends that they don't want. Well, change is different. Reason. It's difficult anyway, but uh, no, I don't think they're going to sit back and do that. But, you know, trying to assassinate a presidential candidate is a serious offense. And I don't think that, uh, I think the Secret Service, there's a thing, I think there's a movie called Vantage Point with uh, Dennis Quaid that's coming out about an assassination. And I think technology, the way it is now, uh, they would be able to foil any, any kind of uh, uh, plan. Uh, oh, to good. assassinate the current president. Oh, uh, well, you know, I, I really don't believe in too much of this technology. You know, I believe what happened in 11 really happened. And, you know, I, I, you know, we're, we're real high on our horse and we think we're untouchable and we think that we have this CSI technology. No, that's not the case. You look at 9 11, that's not the case. I used to think there were missiles uh, somewhere on the East Coast that would blow, blow something out of the sky. We were, you know, we were exactly. definitely uh, uh, wrong with that. So I don't believe in that either. But I do think technology is, is such where they could foil any kind of plan to assassinate a presidential nom uh, nominee. 
Well, you know, you, everybody's supposed to be smart, but not too many people act on their intelligence, right, Tom? That's exactly right, as we see every day on this program. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully that continues, or I'm out of business. Uh, <laughs> I will continuously listen, and um, I will continuously um, DTB, Tom. Yeah. I love that. Now, Anthony, <laughs> how did you want me to take you out? Uh, can you take me out, Kobe stuff? Of course I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. John Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. John Likas. Like like Do you speak the guys no foreplay? Well, put it this way. I tell the guys, your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh, my goodness, Tom. This is horrible. This is not romantic. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Black friends have told me Barack Obama will never, ever make it to the presidency, even if he gets the nomination. They say things like, they'll never let it happen. And they have, not just in blind, they've said it flat out, they expect him somehow to be injured or assassinated or something like that just because uh, of this feeling that somebody like not just a black man but somebody who says he's going to change things will never be allowed to be the president it will never happen do you believe that hope it's not true 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number Artie on the Tom Likas show hello what's up Tom how's it going bud it's going okay Artie uh I'm totally with you on that, boss. Uh, I really think he is. I hope not, but I think he is going to get assassinated. I've been telling all my friends this, and nobody really believes me. But since you said it today, I was like, I was like freaking a. But anyways, uh, yeah, I think he's going to get assassinated, dude. And I don't know how he's going to do it because the security's so tough now. But I'm thinking even his own people, the secret services dudes, could do it. Anybody can do it. What do you think about that, T? I don't believe the Secret uh, Service would do something like that. I just don't. Uh, you know, this is not uh, some banana republic, okay? It's the United States of America even today. Yeah, I feel you on that one, but the world's so corrupted that if somebody wants to do something, they're going to do it regardless. Well, then they would have done it more often. Eh, that's true, too. But I don't know, boss. But I'm totally with you on that one, Tom. I just want to let you know that that's a good topic, and... I'm a fan of your show. I even got the bump, bumper sticker on my van. And can you take me out with the bonk hit? Of course I can. No cost. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jeff on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. You have MLK and we have you, buddy. <clears throat> Personal hero. That's I just wanted to, an I just honor I can't know. quite live up to, but thank you. You're welcome. I just want to let you know, I read in Newsweek, I think it was after the, the Iowa caucus, that um, it was the Obama, like, big old issue. He had his face on the cover. He uh, There was an article in there about how he's had Secret Service protection since last spring when he had received some kind of threats. They were real vague on what, how, what kind of threat, but that's what they reported. They outrageous. Also, what was that? I said it's outrageous. That is crazy. They they also had an interview with his wife, and they kind of, they asked her, you know, how she felt about the protection of her husband. They brought it up because it was a whole race slanted issue, because I guess his wife is the one who always hits on the race issues, because he doesn't want to touch it with like a 10-foot pole. But they asked his wife, and she kind of blew it off like she said, oh, you know, basically, we live in a different time than we did 30, 40 years ago. And I don't think America's a different place, and we don't, we don't really worry about it. You have to say that, even if it's not true. You have to say that. 
you can't let people think that uh, death threats are going to get in your way or going to change the way you think. You can't. You can't admit that. Even if it's true, Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Uh, I'm a long-time listener from the days when you did pl primarily political oriented shows, and glad to see you're getting back to that a little bit. Uh, I wanted to make one point, which is in 2000, the Republican Party was very interested in running Colin Powell for president, and he considered it, and he eventually said, well, no, my wife is against it. But there was no talk at that time of uh, if he ran, you know, become a candidate, he might be assassinated. I think he had transcendent blackness that people... Well, I, I don't think the reason Barack Obama would be murdered or assassinated would be because he's black. I think it would be because he's dynamic and that he's promising sweeping changes. I see. Okay, I thought you go on in the direction he'd be assassinated because of his blackness and. Those no, I said that I had black friends who said this to me. Yes. Uh, but uh, I personally, I don't think that would be the reason. I think it would be because, and that's why I included John and Robert Kennedy in my conversation. It's any dynamic individual who says, "All right, there's a new sheriff in town." Yes, I understand. Uh, well, I hope it doesn't play out that way, but. Um, I understand the uh, the concern. I want to be wrong. I do. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Cosme on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Cosme. Sorry, I'm calling from a closet. And, and you're talking on a speakerphone. No, no, I'm in a, in a in a workroom. Okay, here we go. Listen, I have the perfect perfect plan to thwart any assassination, to make any assassin think twice. And uh, George Lopez said it best the other night, uh, just uh, choose a Hispanic as a running mate, and that'll make... Uh, yeah, that was, right. a, that was a George Lopez joke on the Grammy Awards, yes. Right, right. And I, I laughed my ass off, and it's true. I don't think that's true. I think so. I as, don't. As, I don't think so. As much as they don't want a woman president, I think they'll want a... Uh, possible Hispanic vice president, future president in that role. You think America would want a black president before a Hispanic president? Oh, hell yeah. Just uh, last past summer with the whole uh, um, House resolution for the uh, amnesty program that went down in flames. Yeah, but wait a minute. How many, how many Hispanics have been running? Uh, well, the only one that claims to be Hispanic is uh, Richardson. Right. He comes from a very small state, and very few people know who he is. Right, right. I understand that, but look at how, how long he lasted. Yeah, but that, that's not why he didn't last. I, if, if you pick somebody from California or Texas, uh, you'd have a much better shot. Well, I don't know. There was rumors that uh, if Hillary won the uh, nomination that she would get uh, this uh, pussy out here, Vera Gosa. But who knows? He's another. He's another one who uh, I think is uh, he's going to be a one termer. Yeah. La Viragosa. Oh boy. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Wayne. Oh, Wayne, not ready yet. Okay. All right. Let's say hi to Wayne on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. Hey, I just I just wanted to correct you earlier. You were saying one of your callers. Um was uh, not saying uh, Barack's name was Bin Laden. It is actually his middle name is Bin Laden. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Okay. And it, what is it? It's Hussein. Oh, I stand corrected. You, you uh, certainly do. Idiot. I love when they call it with that sense of bravado, like <laughs> that kind of sneer. That's what I correct something you said. F you. Read a goddamn newspaper. Wikipedia or something, you moron. Don't be calling in here without knowing you have the right answer. 1-800-5800-TOM. Fabricio on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? Doing okay. Great. Long time listening. I really love the service that you <laughs> offer to the community. Well, thank uh, you. <laughs> Two things. First, I agree with you when you say that uh, Barack Obama is probably the most likable guy out there in the race for a presidential between the both parties. 
But one thing, though, that is kind of sad is that I cannot not think about the fact that I, it's one of the options that is being given us to the establishment. So uh, there is a lot of other people, and, and that doesn't go necessarily against him, you know, himself. You know, I don't know him as a person, so I cannot really make a judgment. But um, the choices that we're given and the way we are allowed uh, to make a choice or to make a pick, it's very, very diminishing. We, we, there's no other choices. I mean, this is what it is, and you better... Well, like who, who would you choose? Excuse me? Who would you choose? Well, I could not choose anybody exactly for this, because the, uh, the system is made in a well, way... I, I think this year we had a lot of choices. I did. In fact, I think we had more diversity, and I don't just mean racial diversity. Uh, we had more diversity in the candidates this year than we've had in decades. That's true. I agree with you. But still from the same sauce. Otherwise, I mean, in other words, it's still tomato sauce. I mean, one is uh, puttanesca. The other one is marinara. The other one is fradiola. But it's still tomato sauce. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, who do you think would be a good president? Well, uh, I really love the fact that uh, an African American for the changes. No, no, no! The Forget the people who are running. If if you could choose anybody in America, who would you want as president? Uh, well, yourself first. You know, the reason I could never win is because I've been married and divorced repeatedly. I've admitted to drug use. Of course, yeah. I guess Obama did too, and uh, so did Clinton ultimately. Yeah, but. but but you know what? That's normal. That's normal. I mean, that's normal people. And I would rather more have somebody that has some sort of uh, uh, experience among real But ladies. I don't think, I think that has less to do with the system and more to do with the average idiot in this country. Well, look at the guy that called in before, you know, with the same thing in, uh, <laughs> in London. This is the average people, the average voter in this country. I mean, the, moron, the morons who thought that Bill Clinton should be thrown out of office... Uh, because uh, he got a little oral action in the uh, White House. I mean, <laughs> you know, if, look, the economy was running well, the country was doing well. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, but uh, that's how this country is. If people like that, unfortunately. Dan on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hey. Hey, how are you? Pretty good. Good. Excellent. Long time, first time. Um, I agree with the idea of whether you exactly represent it or not, that this is a possibility. Um, we have a very close primary here between the Democrats, between Hillary and Obama, and we are looking at a possibility of, possi of a brokered uh, primary. Last time we had a brokered primary, or almost a brokered primary, was when Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated in 1968. You're talking about a brokered convention. A brokered convention, I'm sorry, yes. Yes, um, and I believe that is a definite possibility, and if it does happen, uh, we'll have riots on the streets of Los Angeles worse than we had in the 1960s. Um, we will have an explosion of black, uh, black um, Latino violence and Latino on black violence. It's what we, you were talking about the other day, too. Um, that will just simply be out of control. Well, I don't know why you assume that. Uh, for example, uh, we had a conversation the other day about uh, whether Mexican-Americans would support uh, Barack Obama. Right. So you can't assume that if Obama uh, was not chosen at a broker convention that uh, Mexicans would riot. It doesn't make any sense. No, what I mean is that if he does get if he does go to the broker convention and he does get the he does get the Democratic uh, nomination, um, then something may possibly happen. I do him. not believe uh, that uh, in the era of the Internet and YouTube and all of the news media that we have now, cable news 24 seven and all that. I do not believe that any political party would have the gall to go to a back room and decide who the candidate is. I think those days are over. They've been over for 40 years, and I don't think they're coming back anytime soon. So you might be right, but I think it's highly unlikely. Quickly, Larry, get one last comment in here. See, the, the rule is when you say quickly get something in, the person shuts up. Hello? Hello? Yes, Tom? Yes? Oh, sorry about that, Tom. You cut off right when you said my name. Hey, I just quickly Did you hear me say, say quickly? Yeah. Uh, all, right, quickly, well, uh, all right, well, quickly get your opinion in here. Go right ahead. Okay, I just want to say... The Tom Likas Show.